Hi folks, Mr. Ackerman here. Thanks for watching. The topic of today's video is kinematic equations for uniformly accelerated motion. We're going to introduce you to a new type of equation that can be used to solve motion problems. They are called kinematic equations. And I have to warn you, and I'll do this a number of times in the video, they can only be used for uniformly accelerated motion. So we will learn what these equations are. We will see where they come from. We'll learn when and how to use them, and we're also going to talk, here's a warning once again, when you cannot use them. So pause the video now for a moment and have a look at the, uh, where we are in the homework schedule, as well as the learning goals and success criteria. Okay, and you're back, and we're going to dive right into things here. So let's take a look at the first slide. In your textbook, the textbook, by the way, being Physics 11 by Addison Wesley, you're going to see... So that's by Addison Wesley, Physics 11. You're going to see a uh, data table in section 1.6, which has a bunch of equations. And uh, you might look at these and think, oh my goodness, i got to learn six new equations. Well, first of all, all the equations I give you on an equation sheet, so you don't have to memorize them, luckily. But the second thing is, you actually know where a bunch of these come from. For example, you've already seen this one here. Uh, delta D equals V average delta T. That's not a new equation. That one is actually old. And uh, for that matter, so is this one. If you just rearrange this to say average acceleration equals, you'll see it's delta V over delta T. We've seen that before. Uh, this one here actually might look new, but as I'm going to show you in a moment, it's not really new. It's telling you that the average velocity is velocity 1 plus velocity 2 divided by 2. You've seen this before. If you had a mark of 80% on your first test, and then you had a mark of 90% on your second test, and I said, what's your average in the course? You would probably add these and divide by 2 and tell me that's your average. Well, in the same sort of way, that's what's happening here. An object is starting off with an initial velocity of v1. It's ending up later with a velocity of v2. What is its average? Add them and divide by 2. That's where this one comes from. Same idea. Where's this one from? Is this one new? Sorry, not even this one is new, because if you take this formula, the average acceleration formula, which says delta V equals A of delta T, well remember, delta V, delta anything, is just the final minus the initial. So here's something for you to try. Sub this in for that, and rearrange this equation so that it says V2 equals, you're going to come out to equation number 4. How about equation 5? Is that new? Are they teaching us anything new in this course? Sorry guys, once again, nothing really new here. What I'd like you to do is take a look at equation number 1, which has displacement, average velocity, and time. Realize that we just discussed you can substitute average velocity. You can go to this equation, sub this, v1 plus v2 over 2, into there. Multiply it by the time and you'll get down to this. And so even equation number 5 isn't new. It's actually nothing new in this unit so far. What about equation number 6? Is that new? Have you ever seen this before? Okay, I'll grant you that one. This is new. We're going to see where this comes from later on in the video. But for now, let's move on to the next slide. Okay, we're going to try a quick question here, and uh, we're going to get some practice using some of the kinematic equations. A car enters Highway 401 from the on-ramp, traveling at 50.0 kilometers per hour. By the way, you've got to convert this into meters per second. I believe that is 13.8 repeating meters per second. Direction, let's hope the car is going forward. Driver accelerates up to the top speed of 100 kilometers per hour. What is this in meters per second? It is 27.7 meters per second. Still going forward. Good driver. The total time is six seconds. So the first thing to do is to start thinking, what are the symbols that are involved here? Well, this is the starting velocity, so that's a v1. And this is the ending velocity, so this is a v2. The time, of course, is delta t. These are all familiar physics symbols. They ask you, during those same six seconds, what is the average velocity? So let's see what we can do here. I've included the same chart on the last slide so you can use it for quick reference. Can you find an equation that's got v1, v2, and time in it, and also average velocity? So going down the list, 
Well, actually, here's one. It's equation number three. It's got v1, v2. You don't even need time. You can just, for part a, you can do the following. You can say that vav equals v1 plus v2 divided by 2. You sub in the numbers. On the first step, you should always include units and direction to make sure you're not making a mistake. I know it's a bit of a hassle, but it will save you a lot of hassle that comes from including a mistake in one of the early lines of a solution and having to look back where the mistake is and then change everything. Uh, add these two up, divide by two, and what do you get? Well, to spare time on the video here, I'm not going to do this. I think it's pretty straightforward what you have to do. Add these two numbers, divide by two, and you're going to get a value for the average velocity. That's a pretty easy one. How about the average acceleration? Symbol for average acceleration is a av. So now we want to look for an equation that's got this plus any of the other things that we've found or that were given. For example, they gave us v1, v2, and time. And now that we also know the average velocity, we could use that too if we wanted. Which one has acceleration? This one has acceleration. We know the time, so far so good. But delta v, I don't see that symbol anywhere over here in what I've written. So maybe I'm not going to use number two. Uh, we already used number three. How about this one? It's got at the average acceleration. It's got the time. And it's got the initial and final velocities. So yeah, you can use that one. They're asking for the acceleration. You can do v2 equals v1 plus a av delta t. And you can sub in. v2 is the 27.7 repeating meters per second forward. v1 was the 13.8 meters per second forward. And sorry, I've kind of run out of space here plus a av times 6.0 seconds. And so think of this as an algebra equation that says 27.7 repeating equals 13.8 repeating minus 6.0 a average, just rearranging the order of the 6 and the average acceleration there. How do you solve this? Well, this is algebra, guys. This is grade 9 algebra. Pretty easy. Bring this across to the other side, collect like terms, get a number on this side. Uh, sorry, did I put in a minus there? I apologize. Sometimes I make silly little mistakes. That should be a plus. Uh, so what I was saying, bring this across, collect like terms, and then divide out the 6 and solve for a average. I'm going to leave this for you to try because the algebra, like I said, is not too difficult here. Uh, part C asks for the displacement. That, of course, is delta d. And do you have a formula that has delta d plus any combination of the other symbols that are involved? If you guess this one, you are right. We have v1, v2, and time. So for part c, we are going to use equation number 5. We're going to sub in the given velocities. We're going to add them, divide by 2, multiply by the time given, and I'm going to leave that to you to finish as well so I can save time. What I want to point out is this is really just a little bit of a game where what you're trying to do is to match up what's given with what's required. So think in terms of that. What's the given information? What's the required information? And how do I link them up with an equation? Okay, moving along. One of the equations that we haven't really discussed very much is this last one, number six. Where does it come from? Well, actually, all of these equations come from VT graphs. And if you remember on VT graphs, we learned a number of things. We learned that the slope is equal to the acceleration, and we learned that the area is equal to the displacement. So since this formula contains displacement and acceleration, I'm going to be talking about slope and area. Remember, for uniform or constant acceleration, which is what we're dealing with, it means that your velocity graph would have a straight line. So in this case, we start off with an initial velocity v1 shown here and here, and we obviously accelerate because there's a letter a for a certain amount of time given by delta t. So we go from a velocity 1 at time 1 to a velocity 2 
at time 2. What is the change in time? That's t2 minus t1 or delta t. And of course, if you think about it, we accelerate upward, or not upward, but we accelerate from v1 to v2. This is a delta v, if you will. Now, we want to find delta d, which is displacement, that's area. There's actually two areas on this graph. There is a triangular area that I'm showing in blue, and there is a rectangular area that I'm going to try to show here in red. And if you can write these areas in terms of the symbols, you're going to get this equation. Now I'm going to get you started and I'm going to leave it to you to do the rest because I really, I'm not so concerned with you being able to derive these equations or develop them. I want you to use them more than derive them, but it is always good to know where they come from. Let's start with the easy one. Here the area is length times width. And so if you do length times width, you'll have this, which is delta t, and the width, or up to here, well, we're starting at a velocity of 0 and going up to v1, so this side is just v1. And can you see right now that we've already figured out where this part of the equation came from, v1 delta t? That comes from the area of the rectangle. Now what about this? The area of a triangle is a half base times height. So let's see. The one half, well that's this right here. That one half. And the base is delta t. You look back here. There's delta t squared, which delta t squared is really the same as delta t times delta t, isn't it? So one of the delta t's you just figured out. The height here is delta v, right? the height over here. However, is there a delta v in here? There isn't. Are we stuck? Well, not exactly. Remember this, slope equals area. So here's where I'm going to leave you to finish off on your own. Slope is acceleration, but slope is also rise over run. The rise is delta v, and the run, of course, is delta t. And we said slope is acceleration, so there's that. Can you rearrange this formula to sub in for delta v, and in doing so, end up with a half a delta t delta t, also known as a half a delta t squared? Try it. You'll see that you will find where the other delta t comes from, and now you'll know where this equation comes from. It comes from velocity time graphs. Moving on. Here's a question that involves using two kinematic equations to solve, and also you've got to watch out about the directions of your vectors, or you might end up in trouble. Here's the question. A skier is traveling along at a constant rate of 10 meters per second forward. She notices someone who's fallen down in front of her, and so she tries to stop. She slows down with an acceleration whose magnitude is 4.5. Notice I haven't told you the direction of the acceleration, just the magnitude. Why? because I want you to realize that if you are moving forward but you're slowing down, do you remember what that means about the acceleration? It actually means that the acceleration points opposite the, the velocity. Now how would you ever know that? Well, we did talk about uh, a, a simulation for motion which is uh, it's from the FET website if you recall that and it's called The Moving Man and if you uh, downloaded that simulation, I'll just write it here, moving man. If you download that, you'll get to see how the velocity and acceleration vectors, how their directions depend on whether an object is speeding up or slowing down. You'll see that, for example, if, if the moving man, or in this case the skier, is going forward, then of course that means the velocity is forward. And if we have a forward velocity, but we're slowing down, which is what the skier is doing, then that must mean that our acceleration is pointing in the opposite direction. So that's something you need to know. It is background information. And if you don't know that, then you won't know that while the magnitude is 4.5, the direction is back. And that's very important, because 
the skier's initial velocity of 10 meters per second is forward. Of course, this is her starting velocity. She's supposed to come to rest at the end so that she doesn't hit the skier who's fallen down. That's a v2 of 0. As we mentioned, the acceleration is 4.5 meters per second squared, and that is back. And the question is, how far does she go? So for how far, that of course is going to be a displacement. So we're really talking about maybe something like this. And we're going to call that delta d. So pause the video for a moment, go back to the list of equations and see if you can find an equation that utilizes all of these. Okay, and you're back, and I think you're going to find that you're kind of stuck because while we have given you v1, v2, and acceleration, and we've required you to find delta d, there isn't an equation that has both of these. So what you're going to have to do is use two equations here. That's why the title here was this is an example involving the use of two kinematic equations. Now what are the two? I'll give you a hint. Use these given values to first solve for another variable. Solve for delta t. Find an equation that has v1, v2, a, and delta t. And then the second hint is that once you have delta t, now you'll be able to solve for delta d. But you're not going to be able to do it in one step. So this is a two-step question. Pay very close attention. The velocity is forward, velocity 1, but the acceleration is backward. So here's another hint about the acceleration. When you solve this one, you have to realize that you cannot mix backward vectors with forward vectors in the same problem. So what are you going to do? You're going to write this as 4.5 meters per second in the forward direction, but only if we include a negative sign out front. So a negative forward is the same as a positive backward. So these are your two hints. Give this one a try. Um, the actual value for the acceleration, I don't have off the top of my head. I actually had it written down somewhere else, and it's not in front of me. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pause the video for a second just to find out what that is. Bear with me. Back in Okay, so uh, I've just done a quick calculation. I found, uh, actually found where I stored that number. And uh, the value I got for the displacement here was 11.1 .1 repeating meters per second. So check back, or check that you get an answer for displacement of 11.1 .1 repeating, say meters, not meters per second, and the direction, of course, is forward for the skier. Now you're not going to report a final answer with a repeating decimal, you're going to do sig figs here. Uh, roughly, just taking a quick look, I think we're dealing with two sig figs. It's possible we're dealing with three let's say, two sig figs. So let's just get rid of that. There you go, 11 meters forward for your displacement. If you're not getting that after trying these two things and watching out for this little trick in here, then uh, you might want to get some extra help on this question. All right, moving along to our final slide. Uh, when can't you use a kinematic equation? So it's really important to emphasize you can't always use these. Let me show you an example. We've got a sprinter starting from rest accelerating uniformly to a top speed of 8 meters per second in 2.9 seconds. So far it sounds good. Uniform acceleration, why can't you use a kinematic equation here? Well, the problem continues. She then maintains this speed for an additional 7.4 seconds before finishing her run. What is her displacement? Well, maybe I can show you best what I'm talking about if I draw a graph. And the graph, as you might have guessed, is going to be a velocity graph. Let's see, she goes from 0 up to 8 meters per second in a time of 2.9 seconds. And then she continues on for 7.4 more seconds 
which if I do my math correctly, that brings you up to 10.3. These are seconds, by the way, and this is meters per second. Uh, now, what did we know about the motion? She accelerated uniformly, which means I'm allowed to draw a straight line going up. And then she maintained a constant velocity, so I can do that. Now, if I gave you this problem one or two lessons ago, what would you do? You would draw a VT graph, and you'd find the displacement by using an area idea. You'd say, here's area number one, it's a triangle, and here's area number two, it is a rectangle. Uh, take a moment, pause the video, and see if you can calculate the area of the rectangle, and see if you can calculate the area of the triangle. Do that now, and I'll do the same. I'm gonna pause the video here, whoops, and see what I get. Okay, thanks folks, uh, I just did the calculation here. The area down here that I got was 11.6 using a half base times height. The area that I got in here using uh, the length here times the width there is 59.2. I add them up, I get this number. Now, here's what I'd like you to try. Take a look at what you would get if you used a kinematic equation. For example, if we do given required and link or equation, what do we have? We got v1 is 0, we got v2 is 8. We've got a delta t, which you might guess we've got to use the whole time, right? v1, 0, v2, 8. Oops, that's meters per second. What is required is the displacement. Find an equation that has v1, v2, time, and displacement. I think you'll find one pretty quickly. Plug it into the equation and see what you get for displacement. This is where you're going to do it. I'm going to save time on the video by not doing it, leaving it to you. However, you're not going to get this number. Why aren't you going to get this number? Well, the reason you're going to get a different number, which by the way is wrong, is because this problem does not involve uniform acceleration throughout the whole problem. It does involve uniform acceleration here. Sprinter accelerates uniformly, they tell you that. And it does involve a uniform acceleration of zero, also known as constant velocity, here. But the two values of acceleration are different. The slopes are different. You see that with a velocity graph. Because of that change in acceleration, you can't use a kinematic equation for the whole thing. You either have to use a velocity graph, or you could use one kinematic equation in here, and then you could use another kinematic equation in here, and you could combine the results. And that's really what you're doing when you calculate two separate areas on the graph. Because remember what we learned earlier, graphs are where these things come from to begin with. And so that brings me to the fact of the day, or the fact of the lesson down here. It is that you can't use a kinematic equation if the acceleration is changing. You'll have to use one kinematic equation for one type of acceleration, and then another equation for another type of acceleration. And of course, then you can combine the results. All right, lots of questions to try in the uh, homework schedule, in the textbook. Lots of resources available online if you want further practice. And that's it. Have a great day, and I will see you guys in class. Thanks for watching.